Welcome back to my deep dive on patching the polycrel. Last time around we looked at adding polyphony using two tall harmonics. And this time around I'm going to explain how I've been able to create a bass voice by deriving its triggers from what's going on in our lead voice. So here's a listen to our bass voice running on its own. Now I've once again changed up our IntelliGel Use Scale Quantizer. So now we're listening to something that's more like uh, the Jewish Phrygian scale in the key of C. It's one of the modes of the harmonic minor scale. The bass voice is fairly simple. It's made up of um, a live wire AFG running into a tip top, one of the original low pass filters. And then I'm using a little bit of audio rate FM. So I'm also sending uh, a pulse signal from the AFG that's headed into its FM. And then I'm using the envelope for the bass voice to open up that FM a little bit. So then we hear that kind of brappy filter sound that I really love for bass voices to help them stay solid and cut through the mix. The function generator, the envelope for our bass voice comes from channel one. So now we've used all four channels all in cycling envelope mode on a quadrax and channel one is providing the function generator for our bass uh, for our bass, bass voice. And you can see in our um, on our scope, if I pop out channel one's envelope, you'll see the green trace will drop and the bass notes will drop out. So the green is our bass notes, the red is the original melody Krell envelope that we've been looking at in previous videos. So if I put channel one into CV mode, I can see that the same two CVs, my last two CVs here, that I'm using for the melody, I'm using for fall and for rise on my bass part. And so that means that the bass part's Krell function is going to follow along with what the melody part is doing on channel four, but I've reversed those CVs and the bass part is running quite, quite a bit slower and I've got its wave shape, the actual shape of its envelope set to be quite different. So it's a slower moving voice. What's interesting, if you look over here to the external gate outputs, I'm not using any of the gate outputs, neither end of rise or end of fall on channel one. So I'm using gates from channel four to create and to grab notes for the pitches of my bass part. And the reason I'm doing that is that I need the bass part to sort of follow along with what the melody's doing, but I don't want it to follow along so closely that it's doing the, exactly the same thing. I'm gonna kick in our melody and we'll listen to both of them. And you'll notice that as the melody flutters, the bass part sustains. But the bass part will tend to grab a note and hold on to it, sustaining under what that melody is doing. And then every once in a while, the bass note might grab two or three notes in a row and follow along with what the melody line is doing. So how did I get it to do that?
So what I've done is I'm using a little old dope for voltage controlled decay gate. It's a really useful little utility module that just gives us a simple falling envelope, but it can be voltage controlled. And it has a trigger input, and I'm triggering it from the exact same trigger that drives the melody part. So it's at the end of fall over here from our fourth channel of the quadrax that's controlling our melody part. So then the bass triggers every single time that the melody triggers. The difference is that I'm using the gate output of this decay gate module and I can set a threshold. So what's useful about that is that regardless of how many times I'm triggering the decay gate, the gate will stay open as long as it's above a certain threshold. And then once it drops below that threshold, the actual falling envelope, then the gate will close. And I can set that threshold by changing the speed at which that falling envelope drops. So what I've done is I've set it quite high and then I'm using an incoming CV to keep it above the range of the falling envelope. And essentially all this does is it means that the bass part will grab a pitch whenever that gate comes on and it'll hold it even though this little envelope is flashing as it's dropping. It can flash multiple times and I can change that. So if I change the rate of the decay, then my gate starts to come on and off more often and it'll mimic exactly what the melody is doing. So now I've got the bass part changing as often as the melody part changes. And what's unique and useful about this is that I have voltage control over this little function that I've created simply by voltage controlling the speed at which this falls. And then that's useful in the future because it means that I can make some changes to my overall piece and determine how busy that bass part gets, whether I want it to be as busy as the melody is. And of course, remember that in a corral, the faster that the envelope moves, the busier the actual melody part. Or it can be really, really slow, holding and triggering only once all the melody flutters have ended long enough for the gate to go off. So it's a really useful way to control the density of that second voice. But of course, the bass voice itself, its actual contour, um, its filter envelope and its volume envelope are coming from its own Krell melody, which comes from the... Um, comes from its own Corel function, which is channel one of the quad quadrax. So it's a good example of untethering the Corel envelope from when it gets its pitches. So it isn't really a Corel at this stage. I'm simply using a Corel style envelope to control that bass part so that it comes in and out and articulates on its own, as we can see watching the green trace of the scope but it's deriving its pitches from the red trace of the scope. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. Please like and subscribe. Please consider joining my Patreon to help me make more videos and produce more albums. Take care, and we'll see you next time around. Mm -hmm.